<laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. Mr. Luis, Buffalo, Boston. What's up? Manny. Yeah, Manny, the return of the beanie for on a there Monday where Bills are tied for first place. After one week. <laughs> division. After handling the Jets, my, might I add, fairly easy. Didn't, didn't really – we weren't even on our crisp, crisp game. Still whooped the Jets. Wow. Um, covered the spread that people were doubting. We were given one of the largest spreads going into the, the week, and they, they handled it, man. So I just, I just, I'm a very happy guy today. And uh, in a season where the Red Sox, you know, are underperforming, to say the least. Yeah. Speaking of the Red Sox, first team, the first team to uh, 30 losses this weekend in MLB. And I keep hearing things from some Red Sox fans out there that this is exactly where you want to be. But I was wondering, because I, I really don't remember here. I'm asking seriously. And I'm hoping since you're a Red Sox fan, right? You you claim to be a Red Sox fan, correct? Yep. Um, based on the cheating scandal, did you lose, like, draft picks or anything? Like... Does it matter if you if you get the first pick next year because you're probably going to lose it? I'm not sure. I don't remember. I'm being honest. I, think, I really don't remember. No, honestly, I don't remember either, but I don't think we lost the first round pick. I think we lost, if anything, like a second round. If, if okay. that. All right. But well, of, uh, course. of course, baseball is going to, you know, help you guys yeah, out. Yeah, honestly, I remember there being a thing where uh, teams lose more that did this thing, which is like legal, than teams that like the Red Sox and the Astros lost less or, or whatever. Um but real quick, this isn't where I want to be as a Red Sox fan. I think like in a shortened season where 16 teams make it into the playoffs, I would rather watch meaningful baseball for my team in this 2020 season than to be left out of it after like the second week of baseball. So I get it long term. It's, it's going to be cool to have some money to spend and some high draft picks next year. But I would have enjoyed along with football and the NBA playoffs to watch the Red Sox compete for an eighth seed at least, like at the very least, just to get in there. Hmm. That's good to hear just, because I, I'm hearing – me, I'm, though. I'm seeing Red Sox fans celebrating losses here and shit. I'm like, what the fuck is – what's wrong with this world? What's going on the, here? The miserable losers, like you always like to say, man, we can – You guys just love being underdogs. I, everybody loves an underdog story. I'll admit it. 2017 for me was one of the most enjoyable baseball seasons because I didn't expect the Yankees to – make it to a game seven of an ALCS with a young team like that. It was very exciting. Um, but I, I also enjoyed the first half of the season when we were just wiping the floor with everybody. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So I, it's, you know, it's nice. It's nice to know when you're going into the playoffs and you have a, a really high chance to get deep into the playoffs. I think that's really? always the, what you want to be as a fan. All right. Let's talk about something that has that your team will won't have to worry about the the MLB playoff picture. Which, by the way, CT, I don't I don't like to toot our own horn here, but we're on Bleacher Report, man. For the first time, we started this in 2018. The goal was to make a network, right? And recently, we got some news regarding networks and stuff. I don't want to say anything yet because I don't want to jinx it. But there's we got some good news regarding a network out there that may or may not be interested. Um, then I go on Bleacher Report and I see our post up there. And I'm just like, it, what's happening? What's like surreal, right? And thank God that they probably don't listen to our podcast because we shit on Bleacher Report from time <laughs> to time because <laughs> they don't give a shit about baseball. Currently, MLB is the fifth link after NFL, NBA, college football, world football, then MLB. So one I of don't the know. I never shit on Bleacher. I love Bleacher Report, man. I shit on Bleacher Report because it could, it, it, you'll see, I mean, let's not get into that right now. We're grateful to be included in the list of links when you go on MLB right now. I think we're like the 10th link. We want to climb that rank. So subscribe to our channel, help us improve. That's, That's it. it, man. That's it. So MLB playoff picture, the reason why we're on Bleacher Report is because over the last month or so, we've been tracking the, the playoff picture. I, I realize that the playoffs are different this season, and not many people understand how teams are being ranked. So I decided I'm going to start doing it for people. So they could just go to our website, WTTSPod.com, um, and find this article. We update it daily. 
we explain how the playoff picture works and what it's what it looks like if it ended today. And if it ended today, the White Sox are currently the the one seed, um, and they would be facing off against the New York Yankees if the postseason ended today. And by the way, the Yankees are tied with the Indians for the seven seed, but since regions don't face off against each other. I had to go with run differential, and the Indians have a better run differential than the Yankees do currently. So the, the Indians are the seven seed. They would face off against the two seed Tampa Bay Rays. The three seed is the Oakland A's, and they would face off against the Houston Astros, who are the only team in the American League with a sub-500 record in the postseason. Also, the A's lost Matt Chapman for the rest of the season due to hip surgery. So wow. they might be – I mean, thank God the Astros aren't that great this year. But they might be – the Astros might have gotten lucky to – if the season ended today, they might be lucky to face off the A's because they, they're missing their best player right now. And they've been kind of faltering a little bit lately. Um, I'm, I'm going to check the standings real quick. I want to say the Indians, too, are like on a six-game losing streak. Yeah, their offense is atrocious, man. Yeah, I mean, it would have helped to keep Clevenger on your team. Um, uh-huh. Speaking of the White Sox being in the number one seed now, do you think that the MVP race holds more weight now more than ever in terms of like where your team is ranked? The MVP race? Yeah. Because right Maybe now, because- th- right now, the standout MVPs in the American League are Jose Abreu, mm-hmm. number one seed White Sox, Nelson Cruz, On fourth twins. seed Twins, and uh, who would be the other one? I guess uh, I don't even know. Um, uh, I mean, as a Yankees fan, Luke Voigt has been a beast. I c- I'll consider Luke Voigt. I don't think he's the MVP, but I think he – that fifteen and f- that 5-15 and 15 skid that we went through, I think without Luke Voigt, we'd probably lose, you know, out of those 20 games, we'd probably lose like 18 of them. Like, so, he, he, was, he was our only offense. Yeah, you're right. That whole thing. Do we even consider Mike Trout anymore? I mean, he's, he's performing pretty good this season. Yeah, I, I don't – you know what it is is I feel like in, in baseball people look at record, and I feel like the Angels being so bad, I think they're the third worst team in the American League. I'm not sure. It might be the Royals. Yeah. That they're not going to even consider him because of that, especially in a season like this. He's, he's tied for league leading in home runs, uh, 1.051 OPS for the 2020 season. Uh, he's averaging a great exit velocity. I don't know, man. It's it's Trout being Trout again, but I just think there's no excuse for the Angels to be this bad. Mm-hmm. When I think you have a team like the Mariners, what are they like two games out of the eighth seed? I have to I'd have to check the standings, but just the fact that the Mariners are in the conversation, I don't think the Angels should be this bad after getting Rendon and getting Otani. I agree. Back. I know Otani's not pitching, but still, it's, it's weird. I I, it, I don't want to just. I don't want to consider Mike Trout in the MVP conversation for this season. Might have to be Abreu or Cruz. Mm-hmm. I think and it's Abreu even, right now. Even Voight. Even Voight. I'll throw Voight into that mix for sure. I think it's Abreu right now. And, and Mike Trout, by the way, in the American League uh, is second in, in our stat net runs. Um, considering all the runs he's responsible for, he's behind Jose Abreu. He's responsible for 62 runs to his team this season, whereas Jose Abreu is responsible for 68 of his team's runs this season. Nelson Cruz is currently tied for the lead in home runs, leads the league in slugging, leads the league in OPS, OPS plus. And I don't know if you care, but. Yeah, but I, you know what it is? I, 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 when we had our midseason predictions, I had told you that, that we recorded a week late. The week that we were supposed to record, Nelson Cruz was, was my alternative MVP okay. in the American League. The reason why I, can't, I don't feel comfortable with that is because I feel like writers or whoever it is that votes for MVPs, I think it's at the BBWA. I'm not sure. They're not going to give it to him because he's a DH. Has there ever been a DH MVP in baseball? I don't think there has been. I don't remember. World Series, I think, maybe. I don't know. Maybe Ortiz in like a World Series or an ALCS yeah. or some shit, but I don't think a, a league MVP, I don't think it's ever gone to a DH. Not to my recollection. I can't remember. It's just that division, you know, it's so that division's tough. The the twins are not a bad team and they were the third they were third in that division, meaning that they would have been yeah. the seventh or eighth seed a, a week ago. And Jose, both Jose Abreu and Nelson Cruz have played a lot of games this year. 
Yep. Jose Abreu, 46. Nelson Cruz, 45. Between, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind giving it to a guy like Nelson Cruz. I wouldn't mind either. I love Nelson Cruz. By but the way, net runs, the fact- he's responsible for 49 of his team's runs, which is ranked 26th. And Jose Abreu? Jose Abreu is number one in the AL, uh, hmm. third in all of baseball. Okay. So there you go. You, you got, you're cooking something there with that stat. It's, mm, I like that. I listen. I I comb through these. You have the most complicated fucking stats in the world out there with war, and you know woba and x woba and shit like that, where I couldn't calculate it if you gave me the numbers. And I, I for me, I I always used. I annoy the crap out of you guys when I always say runs equals wins. I think teams need to score runs. Obviously, the object is to score runs to win games. So I wanted to see. Is there a stat out there that tells me how many runs a player is responsible for? And of course, you have runs and you have RBIs, but RBIs are are include home runs, which is kind of repetitive because that's also included in runs. You know what I mean? Like you got a double, there's like a double whammy there. Mm -hmm. So RBI minus home runs plus runs tells you how many runs a player is responsible for. The net runs that that single player helped his team uh, score, right? So it's such a simple stat, and I don't, I don't find it anywhere. So I'm claiming it. Fuck it. We're claiming it. That's our stat now. Net runs. And if you look at it and compare it to war, it kind of aligns with the war stat, too. Like, it tells you who's more valuable. Um, so, yeah. So, anyway, Freddie Freeman leads everybody this week. Last week, it was Fernando Tatis. But Freddie Freeman had a monster week last week. Yeah, Freddie uh, Freeman's quietly having an MVP season. He won't win it. I don't think he's going to win. I think it's going to be Tatis. No. It's Tatis yeah. is to lose. Honestly, yeah. I think that – what are the Padres are like six games in a row winning now, I think? Yeah. They're, they're two like and a half games out of first place in the West. We all and laughed. And they're going to face off against the Dodgers in a three-game set. If they sweep the Dodgers, they're going to have first place to themselves. We all laughed at uh, Machado for signing that deal, taking the money. But th- think about this really quick. The Chicago White, it's insane, the comparisons. The Chicago White Sox, hottest team in the American League. Sa- uh, the San Diego Padres, hottest team in the National League. They're both 25 and 5 in their last 30 games. Those are the two teams that Manny Machado was deciding between. Remember, it was between the Chicago White Sox and the San Diego Padres. Because, because the White Sox got his brother in law or his, yeah. his cousin. Whatever. Right. And, um, and they're they're within striking distance of first place in the in the in the NL. And quite frankly, I think the Dodgers are still the best team in baseball. Same. But the the Padres just look dynamic right now. I just, I don't know if they have as good of a pitching staff as as the Dodgers do, and I think that's what matters in the postseason. But they're a dynamic offense. You have Will Myers is a fucking beast this year again. I don't know how that happened. Oh my god! After <laughs> after, I, after that guy was just finding <laughs> trying to find a home in our fantasy league last yeah. year. Yeah. Uh, you have. Cronenworth, you have, you know, Eric Hosmer is finally embracing launch angle. I know he's hurt right now, but he's hitting more home runs. He's he has he's having a resurgent season. Yep. Um, Chris Paddock is giving up a lot of home runs, but he's having a good year. I, I don't know. They have Clevenger now. They have a you know that's a decent one two punch right there. Clevenger Paddock. Um, Matter, that, that has to be the the move of the year. Clevenger to to the Padres. My God. If they if they win it this year, that's that's one of the biggest moves. Um, and both those teams are just built around a young, a young core, too. So that, that's very interesting. They're going to be good for a long time, those two teams. Well, we think. What about it? We think they're going to be good I, for a long I mean, time. I, I just feel I like know, we, we, fall, we fall in love with these young teams that dominate. It's a short season. I honestly don't yeah. know. I can't say without a doubt that the outcome would have been the same if there was a 162-game schedule. Honestly, we don't know. I think the Dodgers are a solid team all around, especially with Mookie Betts. But with the, even with the Padres and the White Sox, I didn't think the White Sox – I mean, I thought the White Sox were going to be okay. I didn't think they'd be number one seed Me neither. in their division okay. So either they're ahead of schedule and that's valid or they're the hot team at the moment when the season is only like two months long. And who knows yeah. what, what – who knows? No, you're right. I, I think I think you're. It's easy to get ahead of ourselves in a 60 game season, um, and we have to stop. I have to stop now and think like, if this was 162 games, is it feasible that these two teams could get hot in a 60 game stretch? 
and they could get hot. It's possible for a team to get hot in a 60-game stretch, but what would happen with the remaining 100 games if it was a regular season? Could they stay hot like this for the, yeah. for the rest of the way? Mm-hmm. And that's, that remains to be seen. So thanks for, thanks for bringing me back down to earth, man. That's thanks what I do, for man. shitting on my parade. Um, that is what I do. Let's go to the National League really quick. We just spoke about the Dodgers and the Pods. The Dodgers and the Padres own the one and four seeds. So they could swap if, if there's a sweep. I don't know if that's going to happen. But mm-hmm. the two seed are the Atlanta Braves. Uh, the three seed, and they would face off against the Phillies of the season ended today, who are the seventh seed. The third seed are the Cubs, who would face off against the Cardinals of the season ended today. What a matchup. Four seed is the Padres versus the Marlins, who are the fifth seed. And you have the Giants, who are the only NL team with a sub-500 record. They're the eighth seed, and they would take off. They would face off against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Hmm. So, I don't know. I, it's random, man. I, I didn't expect – there's a lot of teams I didn't expect to be in the, in the postseason hunt this year. Uh, I didn't think the White Sox were going to be there, and they're the one seed. Um, I for sure didn't. I'm more. I'm more shocked that the Giants are still in the conversation, man. And the me Marlins. too, man. <laughs> but again, the Marlins still have to make up a lot of games, right? They're but, so they're 23 and 21. So they've played 45, 44 games. They have 16 games left. I gotta okay. say, Major League Baseball has done a pretty, a pretty good job at. I can't believe I'm getting them giving them credit for this right now, but they've done a pretty good job at, at trying to to weather the storm here because the Cardinals and the Marlins missed a lot of games because of COVID. The Cardinals have already played 40 games. I know that they have a lot of games to play over the next two weeks. They have 20 games left and there's only two weeks left of baseball. So that's a lot, but that they, that they've made up that much time already that they're 20 and 20. They played 40 games a season when they miss like the first two weeks of the season or three weeks or whatever, I think is impressive. Um, So you got to give credit where credit is due. Yeah, no. Um, even with that being said, though, I mean, the Marlins being the fifth seed, yeah, the Giants being the eighth seed. Uh, how how are the Rockies, man? Are the Rockies still within striking distance to grab the eighth seed, or are they pretty much done? The Rockies have fallen off. They're twenty one and twenty five. They're still one game behind the the Giants in the loss column, but I don't know. I don't know about the team. The team that shocked me is the Cincinnati Reds. Yeah, you had them. You had them uh, winning. That I had them division. going. Yeah, I believe uh, you win the division is what I believe you said originally. Or? Yeah. And Sunny Gray started the season hot, and then fucked me, my fantasy team. I'm using an F word, Bleacher Report. <laughs> deal with it. Um, fucked me big time. The last two starts when I needed him most. Um, now he's on the IL. Doesn't matter because I'm not in the postseason anymore. Enough about me though. But Trevor Bauer, my God, man, Trevor Bauer, hottest free agent probably. And and they improved their offense. They got Nicholas Castellanos, who was, on, who was a beast to start the season. You know, Joey Votto's there, Mike Moustakas. You, you have a, a good offense. I don't know why that team isn't doing better than, than the record says they are. The Rockies are one game behind the Giants in the loss column. So I yeah. wouldn't rule them out just yet. It's just crazy that these teams under 500. Didn't we have a, didn't we record an episode last year where we were, talking about teams under 500 making it to the playoffs and that I wasn't okay with it. Or I don't remember what my take was on it, but just looking at this, I'm still kind of not okay with it. Just yeah. Like, how bad some of these teams are. Yeah. The giants are the only team currently and the Astros, the giants and the NL are the only team with a sub 500 record that would be in the postseason. And in the AL it's the Astros. But can, um, we, agree, can we agree that a team that's above 500 is at least like the what is it? It's like the the one thing to start the conversation of you being a good team. Yeah. At least. Like, if it gets a five, be, be a 500 and above team, you can start the conversation that your team is a good team. And I'm not okay with these teams being rewarded going into the playoffs, man. If the Red Sox can't make it, they shouldn't make it. Oh, my God. Anyway, um, the NL to me looks like an easier path. If you're if, like, if you're the Dodgers, I feel like you're afraid of the. The Padres and then the Atlanta Braves. I don't know what the fuck is going on in the last two weeks, but I feel like every one of their players has has a three home run game. Adam Duvall yeah. did it. Freddie did Freeman do it? I don't remember. Uh, no, but he's he's had I think a, he had a two 
home run game. One I, of them was so, a grand slam, I believe. So you, ha- I know that Acuna did it. Uh, Marcelo Suna did it. Adam uh, Duvall did it twice. Adam Duvall did it twice. I think he did. I'll, I'll, I'll check that real quick. And then there was a graphic during the Braves game yesterday about the highest OPSs in the last 30 games or something. And four out of the top five players are Atlanta Braves players. Like their offense is, is out of this world. Um, so I'm afraid of, of the Braves, but I feel like the top dogs are the Dodgers and the Padres in the NL. Then when you jump to the, to the American League, I feel like even though the Astros are 23 and 24, apparently Verlander is going to be ready for the postseason. If he comes back, that's a tough eight seed right there. Like if, if, you're, if you're the Chicago White Sox and you have to face off against Zach Greinke and Justin Verlander in that first three-game series there, that's, that's going to be a tough task, I think. Yeah, uh, just real quick. Adam Duvall had, on September 2nd, three home runs. September 9th, three home runs in a game. Crazy. Nine RBIs in that second game. So this guy basically jumped from, like, who knows where in the home run uh, leaderboard to what's the number one guy in uh, – is it still Tatis in, in the National League? Adam Duvall has 14. I'm I know in the American sure. League – I know in the American League it's, uh, it's, it's 16. But Adam Duvall is obviously, like, probably in the top five now. After you not, have – Not being in the top ten. Tatis is 15, yeah. And Marcelo Suna, 14. Duvall, 14. Um, crazy. Mookie Betts, 15. Mookie Betts, man. Wow. Mookie. Getting a Good jersey. Player. I don't care. You should, man. I might. I will. I love Mookie. He's one of my favorite players, but I just couldn't embrace it because he was a Red Sox. Now I can. Now I can. Thank you, Mookie. Um, where was I? Want to talk more about the Red Sox? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Nah, I'm good. But playoff picture. Like, in the, the American League, I feel like is a tougher a tougher road to the World Series because even though the Cleveland Indians are, are kind of falling apart a little bit, once it gets, again, pitching, run, pitching, the postseason is all about pitching. Once you get to the postseason, you're going to have to get through uh, Shane Bieber, a Carlos Carrasco, a McKenzie, a Plezak, One of They're all really good pitchers for a staff. Um, they might have the best pitching rotation in the American League, actually. Yep. Um, then you have the, the Tampa Bay Rays were pesky as fuck. I don't know if you saw this, but last week they put out an all-lefty lineup. Did you see that? Yeah. No, I didn't see it, but I, I'm imagining it in my brain. It never happened before. All-lefty lineup, lefty starter. Ever. Ever. It's never happened before. And it's it, no switch hitters, tr- like pure lefties. It's never happened before. Wow. One through nine, all lefties. How did that work out? They won. They killed the Red Sox. <laughs> but then again, it's the Red Sox. Um, but they're just a, such a pesky team. The Blue Jays, I don't want to like, sh- I don't want to shit on them, but I still don't believe in them that much. I don't know. Me neither. I'm looking at the standings right now. They'd be the fifth seed today. They have no pitching. So they have, they have Ryu and um, who else is in their rotation now? Uh, Tejon Walker, Tejon Walker, who's who's has not looked. He has not looked great. Yeah. So um, I want to believe that the Blue Jays can make some noise, but based off what the playoff pictures looks looks like today, I'd like to see the Twins advance. The White Sox, obviously, for reasons that I don't need to mention here. Yeah. The, so Blue Jays starting rotation is Ryu, Tanner Roark, Chase Anderson, Taiwan Walker, and Robbie Ray. I forgot they yeah. got Robbie Ray. I forgot about that as well. Um, in the central, the the White Sox. What's the Lucas Giolito? What Lucas are the Giolito. starters they have? Uh, Dallas That's Keuchel, it? but he's currently on the DL IL. I think. I think he's coming back. Yeah, he'll be back. Um, they have Gio, and and Dylan Cease. Gio Gonzalez. On the, Gio Gonzalez is on the uh, White Sox too, I believe. Currently, he's listed as a bullpen arm. Wow. Ouch. So, yeah. But that offense, yes, Mining Grandal, Jose Abreu, Luis it, Robert is a real deal. Tim Anderson. Can we give some love to Tim Anderson, people? Like, I love Tim Anderson. Yoan um, Mankata, who's been dealing with, who had COVID and is saying that he still feel he doesn't feel the same since he had COVID. So, for those so, deniers out there. 
so keep keep your pants on, but oh, I'm sorry. Let, let me let you finish that that thought. Elo Jimenez, the offense up and down is is a juggernaut. Nomar Perfect. Mazzara, I know that he's not looked upon as a big a big name, but he, if he gets on a hot streak, he's he's as good as anybody could be. Edwin Encarnacion, I mean, this team is is stacked. Perfect lineup for a Yankees pitching staff whose best pitcher gives up the most home runs in baseball. That's scary. To me, see, right there, that scares me because you're right. Because I'm not afraid of Garrett Cole. I feel like Garrett Cole could do his business. You saw what he did in his last start. But like you said, he does give up a lot of home runs. So I said it last year when people were, you know, getting boners over Justin Verlander and he was leading the league in home runs given up. And you saw what his, his, what happened to him in the postseason. The home run killed him. He was yeah. atrocious in the postseason. So don't be too confident if you're a Yankee fan, like I like I was right there. But um, that might be the worst matchup you could possibly have. If you're the Yankees, you want to get out of that eight seed because I don't want to face the White Sox. They, may, they might be the only team. Them and the Rays might be the only two teams that I want to stay away from in the American League I'm in kind a three-game obs- series. I'm kind of upset the Nationals aren't in the hunt because I I, I want to keep I want to keep seeing Juan Soto man in in the in the playoffs. Just watching he leads he leads baseball in OPS by the way Juan Soto. Oh man, uh, and I don't know if you I don't know if you saw this. We're all over the place in this episode. Fuck yeah, me. go for it. Um, I don't know if you saw this, but Juan Soto and Fernando Tatis were in ESPN the top two uh, most exciting players in baseball right now. And those are the top two guys that we keep talking about on this podcast. How do they, how do they determine this? So I they can't find pull, the piece now. It did was they last just pull, week. Did they pull Twitter? Maybe. Probably. Well, here's the thing, Manny. Keep your pants on. But uh, baseball okay. savant released a out above average stat for 2020. Guess uh-huh. who is number one? Unless you already saw this since you're subscribed to all these random ass stats. But no. Guess. Just take a guess. Who's Juan number? No. <laughs> All right, oh. come on. He's a great hitter, but I don't know about his fielding being that elite. Oh, so, a field, so this is a fielding stat. Out, out, above, out above average. average. Out above average. Jackie Bradley Jr.? No. Mookie Betts? This would have made more sense when we were talking about the White Sox. It's Luis, Luis Robert. Wow, no way. Yeah. I meant to bring this up when you were talking about the White Sox. We went random off a little bit there. Got Gabe Soto some love. But, uh, yeah, so it looks least... like we're only dropping one episode this week because <laughs> there's no way we're going to break this apart. <laughs> wow, that's a, that's crazy though. I'm yeah, impressed. man. This guy is this guy is future future MVP.